There we go. All right, Facebook, we are here. And anybody else who watches this later, this will be up on YouTube and hopefully stream to some other platforms as well. I am here today with the absolutely amazing Kamara Ramsey. Kamara, hey. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you You're for having me. You are welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We are so excited to have you on here with us today because you bring such an amazing wealth of information and knowledge and wisdom from your time in the schools. So um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and share the exciting things that you have going on with PLC and your journeys and what you're offering folks now. We'll go over that again later, but let them know who you are. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's an amazing introduction, Jessica. I wouldn't expect any less. Um, thank you all for joining us, for everybody's here. We're here to really just pour into you and help you get some free tips and tricks to keep you going in the school system because we know what it looks like on the inside. And that was, that's what brings us together. Uh, my name is Kamara Ramsey. I'm coming from many states, but my home state of New Jersey. Um, what they say, the tomato state, I think we are. I'm really like oh, to know that. Yeah, and blueberries. Blueberries, I get down with the blueberries though, for sure. Okay. So I'm here, I'm coming in as a 20, three year educator, 23 years. And the only way I remember that is I think about the age of my oldest child. So, <laughs> the only okay, that's it, that was easy. So 20, 23 years, 23 years in education, um, started my career in kindergarten where I think everyone should start because it gives you a greater appreciation for the grace of children and their learning. Um, but Started in kindergarten, moved to first grade, fourth grade, eighth grade, then moved into administration, K to eight, uh, pre-K to four, and a lot of other arenas where I fell into that leadership space. And then I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. I got a little burnt out, got burnt by the system and then burnt out, which are two separate, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. And then I decided that I wanted to touch the lives of educators in a different way. Um, and a different way just really means just not having to conform to uh, the structure that is that is currently existing. So I decided I'm going to fall into consulting, which gives me the freedom and the autonomy to do what I want to do in my business the way that I want to do it so that I can sleep well. At night. <laughs> and so I came up that with- That sounds like a dream. <laughs> It is, right? It's the dream we're creating. It's the it dream is. we're creating. So I came up with this fabulous company called PLC Leadership Group. Um, we are that on all platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of those things. Um, and we help new and aspiring leaders collapse time, basically from a one to three year uh, span. We come in, we support you, we coach you, we walk you through it we rub your back and then, you know, we let you get mad about it and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but really collapsing that time so that you can see the growth and the fruits of your labor while you're in the school. So that's what we do. So you can find us if you are new or you know anybody that's new, absolutely reach out to us so we can try to coach you through some things. Absolutely. That's yeah. the long story of who I am. <laughs> that's okay. You know what? It's important, I think, because on, on this platform, we're talking to primarily new teachers, mm -hmm. right? So it's important for them to, to see that you have gone through all this process and you're not just, you know, some guy off the street just coming in saying, you know, yep, I know. And you really don't know. You no, don't you know, know. Mm -hmm. you know, you know. Yep. So as as so this this month has been behavior management success month. Mm -hmm. You from having all these different opportunities to engage with students and engage with teachers on all these different levels, what just off the top of your head, what would you say about behavior management success? 
consistency is key. Mm. That's it. It's no, uh, and, and it's so funny. So pe- just so people don't think that we make this stuff up as educators, right? Mm-hmm. I'm literally taking this off of my desk cart. What does that say? Consistency. That's it. Yeah. You have to be consistent. If you are not consistent, nothing works. Even in adults. If the adults need it, then the children need it. Let's think about life in reverse. You're looking at adults. You're looking at adults who are the model, who are going to show you what you're going to go through. So why is it that we expect these little people to do the adult things and the adults are still thinking over mm-hmm. the adult? So you have to be consistent. You have to consistently understand that you need to meet them at, meet them where they are. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be consistent in a lot of things. Consistency is hard. Consistency is so hard. It, you know, I even just think about the food that I eat, like, <laughs> right? Like I eat really good. I start to feel really good. And then I'm like, oh, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. And it's so hard because you have to be so intentional. Mm-hmm. You have to fight the inner you. Right. And I lit, I was talking to another educator just about this this morning because we were talking about self-awareness and accountability and the level of reflection that needs to go into teaching as a whole. Mm. Because she's a math teacher. So in her space, everything is finite. Mm-hmm. Right. So she was having a conversation with another leader and he said, you know, well, I taught the information so this said child should know it. And she said, how do you know that he knows it? And he said, I, she said, well, let me, let me rephrase the question. Since you don't understand, I'm saying, how do you know? Did he demonstrate for you that he knows it? And then he said, no. And it was like, if you had just reflected on yourself, Mm-hmm. Am I, as the adult, using the proper language? Am I helping this child articulate the language by asking the right questions? It, it just goes so deep, and but it has to be intentional, right? And when we were having this conversation, I quickly had reference to the five love languages. Mm-hmm. And again, it goes back to when you think love languages, you think relation, mm-hmm. right? This is a relationship. This is a teacher-child relationship. Mm -hmm. In order for me to learn how to teach you where you are, I have to consistently come outside of how I learn because you innately teach how you learn. Mm -hmm. I have to come out of how I learn and into how Jessica learns. That's intentional. Jessica, it is not, and it's not easy for a classroom teacher. I get that. Mm -hmm. So you have to be intentional about how it becomes intentional for you. Mm. You have to study your students and come up with a way to innately remember that Jessica is a rhythmic learner. Kamara is a linguistic learner. You You need to be able to know those things and challenge yourself. And while you may not know everything, maybe you pick five. Top five, five students? Five, no, top five, five things that, five. That, that can help you remember the type of learner mm-hmm. that Jessica is, right? And challenge yourself. If you have 25 students, you have a whole month. Yeah. You have a whole month to, to learn five things about each child every day. Do mm-hmm. it every single month and it'll start to become... Wow. Like, like your own, right? Mm-hmm. Because then they, they're they seen, you can meet them where they are and you can code switch. Mm-hmm. We code switch and everything else except for education. Mm-hmm. You code switch when who you're having a conversation with in this space, this space, this space, this space, but you come into education and it's like, no, we got to do it like this. Hmm, that's weird. That doesn't even make sense to me. That's my own observation. Yeah. So, so learning how to meet them where they are 
consistently. It makes them feel seen. It makes you feel so much more accomplished because you're making that interpersonal connection. Mm -hmm. And when you're deliberate about your actions towards somebody, there's a connection there. They feel that. Yeah. And you can't pull away from, from that. And then that, oh, so many times that's when kids rise because they don't feel like they're just looped in with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Kamara, you're, you are really going in depth and using some different words for something that I say all the time. And, and one of the, what it is, is that relationships will solve problems mm -hmm. that behavior management can never dream of. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I told somebody this morning, I said, you know, <clears throat> I have three sons, um, the one that's 23 and then a 15 year old and a 14 year old, soon to be 14. He'll be 14 in June. And um, that one is my firecracker. He gives me a run for my money, but I'm here for it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So his teacher, well, I'll go back the beginning of the school year. When I went to back to school night, he has a period of his day where all of his teachers are in the same space. Well, they all kind of run the same structure. So at back to school night, they all happen to be free um, at the same time. And my recommendation to them very clearly, but they didn't, they heard me, but they didn't process and listen. Mm. Because I said to all of them, my child is relational. If he knows that you care about him, he will work for you. That's your leverage nobody's using it and it's April right and and it's and the good thing is that I am the mother that I am right mm -hmm. because I'm you know but even the other day you know his teacher emailed me and said that he had been coming late to an independent study hall class not to minimize it but it's an independent study hall class right he's coming late and then when he comes in you know, he's kind of like not getting to the work that he should be focusing on when he comes in, he's got his head down and he's kind of you know, said, okay. So my response to her was, so what incentives, not consequences, mm -hmm. and I use that term, have you put in place for him to get to class on time? Mm -hmm. because in his little boy middle school mind it's a free class yeah and I think I finished my work so why am I rushing to get to nothing mm -hmm. you're not feeding him the way you need to feed him in the moment mm -hmm. and so you're emailing me to say that and that I'm gonna put a pin in that email piece make sure we get back to that you're emailing me and saying, you know, what's happening. And I want to know as his mother, but that's not a behavior that I could fix in the moment. Mm -hmm. And did you have a conversation with him about why? Like, I'm sure he'll tell you. He, yeah, I'm sure he'll tell you, but you need to ask him. I can't fix that behavior over a delayed email communication mm -hmm. because now we're in this world in this space in education I don't know when it really happened I don't know if you can speak to it or not but why can't we pick up the phone and call a parent why is this constant email it feels very documented it does but my question even be beyond that is why aren't we forming relationships with all of our students like, what is that? And right. why are we looking for somebody else to solve really small problems? Because like, once you call a parent, there's nowhere else to go, right? There's nowhere else to go. <laughs> right. And if you're going to call a parent for something small that you could probably take care of on your own, what happens when something big happens? Because big things do happen. And you've totally taken away your power. Okay, say that again. You've totally taken away your power. Your totally. own power. You have totally you hear taken that, away new your teachers? power. When you call in parents, when you call in admin, I'm not saying don't ever do it. I'm not saying don't ever do it. There are times when it has to happen. However, once you do that, you have, I'm even going to say it different, Kamara. 
You said you've taken away your power. I'm going to say you've given. You've I, given I away completely power. agree. Willingly and very easily because children are able to smell blood. Yep. And I, I, like it's sharp. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was at my nephew's um, intervention and referral services meeting this week, and I had to say to his teachers flat out, you have to be consistent. And, and, I, and the vice principal disagreed with my points because he's on a point system for his behavior where he gets his rewards. You know, we all use it, new teachers, the little stickies and the Velcro and all of that. And she did not agree that uh, it was okay for him to move his token. And then sometimes the teacher moves it. And I said, no, 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 no. You need to pick one. Either he moves it all the time or she moves it all the time. Yeah, that absolutely. can't work for him. And, and in maybe some scenarios, you want to provide those leniencies and levels of trust, trust and independence, but you have to know the child. Mm -hmm. and, the token board should still be conducted the same, but the intricacies are form fitted. Yep. And in this child, you cannot, I'm going to do it one time and you do one because he's the child that will come back and count how many times you had to do it versus how many times he had to do it. And then it, it didn't become the thing. Right. And it takes mm -hmm. away the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. And the teacher was really taken aback that I said that because she's like, you know, it takes away the autonomy. And I said, I can agree with you in some cases, but when you are trying to get to love a level of, again, consistency and stamina in mm -hmm. some children, there's just things that you can't do. Mm -hmm. And that's a small feat to get a big win. Right. So. And I find, um, I was talking to you about your nephew this week and uh, He's a little guy. Yeah, he's six. He's six. So yeah. that's very different than asking your son who's 14. Right, right. Right, very, very different. Mm -hmm. Very, very different. I've worked with, with little folks, little people for many, many years. And I've found that they, they don't, necessarily understand mm -hmm. the when and the why and the how. Mm -hmm. And so you're not at that age, you're not just teaching the behavior, you're also teaching the system. Whereas mm -hmm. at 14, if he gets incentives, he understands what and why and how mm -hmm. he just has mm -hmm. to decide if he's going to do it or not mm -hmm. for the most part. Now you have kids that are outside of that. Absolutely. You know, but mm -hmm. it's this, it's an it's an age appropriate level of you know uh, what works for them, Absolutely. right? And and you know some six year olds like my nephew, you you might be able to say, well, I'm going to do it every time, mm -hmm. but he's not that guy. You know, he's just not. He's the kid who he's at my house one day, and I said, well, you're supposed to love so and so, you know, this way because we're family. And he flat out looked at me. He said. Auntie, you can't tell me what to do with my heart. Oh, he's I had, right. I had nothing, right? But oh, do you yeah. see the <laughs> level of in, the level of intelligence in a six year old? So if you are not consistent with him, he he's gonna play sees you that. all day. <laughs> he sees that done. <laughs> he, yep. he and I, I was stumped. I was like, you right? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. You are. You're right. You're right, baby. I think that's how you what to do with your heart. Wow. Mm -hmm. So wow. they're watching and learning and picking up way more than some people would like to admit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So we're having this conversation and it's kind of like a higher level, I guess you could say. It's like, you know, the mindset behind, why do we need consistency? What are, you know, reflection, all that, which is all very important stuff to do, but let's transition into some practical things. So what does that look like 
practically, I see you're getting excited. Yes. What does that look like practically for a new teacher when they're thinking about, okay, I have to be reflective. I have to learn all these new kids. I have to, you know, have a relationship with every one of them. And I don't think every one of them even likes me. And how am I going to be consistent with these five kids who need this over here? And these two kids that need this over here and that kid who's running around the back of the room and what in the world am I doing here? Oh, so many good things. So many good things. <laughs> First thing I'm going to say is, okay, so depending on the region, right? So you and I are in New York, New Jersey. So if you're in the, um, the South or if you're in out West, you know, it starts at different times. You need to start thinking about what you want the culture. Mm -hmm. Hear me because a classroom has culture. Mm -hmm. Would you want the culture of your classroom to look like in the spring before you leave? So that means you're reflective, going back to that awareness piece. So if you are thinking about this worked this year, this didn't work, da da da. But even if you're new in summer, how do I want my classroom to look as a new teacher? What do I want people to come in my classroom and feel? Okay, because be clear, culture is a feeling. It's not a routine that you're exhibiting in action. And the culture is embedded, so it's there whether you're there or not, if you structure it right. So you need to be thinking about that in the summer, and then you need to spend at least six weeks hammering it out, consistently hammering out the structure, with the, with the timing, the transitions look like, what the routines look like for you, them, logistics, people in the building, if you're sped, some, maybe you have something that says they can't come in at a certain time because they're pottying. All of those things matter. You need to spend six weeks focusing on just that and nothing else. It's going to feel like you're wasting time and losing ground, but you're not. It goes back to relation, right? You make the structure strong, all this other stuff we can work with because later you'll be able to go farther faster if this is solid. So you spend your six weeks doing that and you'll be ready to go. And, and it might mean I set my classroom up this way and I put my bulletin board over there and, da, 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 and all of the things and yes, it's pretty but it's not functional once you get all your kids in the room. So I'm gonna need you to eat your lunch in your classroom, go on back in your classroom, take that bulletin board down, reposition your room while your kids are at special and come back and get back at it and teach them the new culture and the new system because the placement is different. Mm -hmm. Once you put it down, you don't have to be married to it. If it's not working, change it. Mm. But you have to be consistent. Man, this is so good. So I want to share a story, Tamara, for my first probably really long time. I'm going to say 10, 12 years of teaching. Mm -hmm. I, people told me this and told me this and told me this, and I didn't believe them. Finally, I was like, all right. And now we're struggling all through the year. I'm sad to say, so new teachers, listen, don't wait 10 years. Okay. So finally one year I was like, we're going to take all of September, mm -hmm. all of September. And we're going to do nothing but systems and, and uh, procedures and all of that for all of September. So our academics, we, you know, you have to do something ELA during ELA time. You can't just mm -hmm only practice how to line up or how to hand in your paper or, mm -hmm. or how to get your computer, you know, whatever. But what we would do is we would call ELA time, ELA time. Okay. So let me be clear. I, um, at this point in time was in a self-contained, what we call a six, one, one classroom. So it's six students, mm -hmm. one teacher, one classroom assistant. And, uh, these students were very involved in their autism. They were still able, they were all functioning about three years behind mm -hmm. and none of them were in, it, it's a self-contained room. I think I said that none of them were in 
the general population okay. for any time at all. So these are some pretty involved kids. Mm-hmm. They've all been asked to leave their homeschool okay. to come and spend time with us. Mm-hmm. So this is the population I have. So I said, all right, so we're going to take ELA time. And during ELA time today, we're going to learn how to get the laptops out. They're going to be able to read a story on their laptop or listen to a story, whatever that is. And then we're going to work on putting it back. So mm-hmm. the academic piece that they thought they were doing was the story that they watched on YouTube or storyline online or whatever. But the real teaching came in. This is how you take care of your, and why do you take care of your laptop? Exactly. Because exactly. you, you got your name on your laptop, right? Want to be the only kid without a laptop? That's you it. Do that. That's right? it. And so, Mara, we spent the whole month doing that. We worked out all the kinks, right? And mm-hmm. we would tell them, like, "Oh, guys, that didn't work. We thought that would work, but that didn't work. Did that work for you?" They'd be like, "No, yeah, tell them. No, yeah. That didn't work for us either. So let's go ahead and change it, and we're gonna find something that does work." Mm-hmm. And what I would do is take pictures of them when it was working. Ooh. And then I would use those pictures of them doing the right thing as the visual mm-hmm. for whatever the procedure was going to be. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So that happened by the time, by the time September ended early October, the academics we were able to do, oh my gosh. It took, you, it took you two seconds to get those Chromebooks out, right? Two like seconds. once you spent the time, mm-hmm. you could be doing whatever else you were doing. Yeah. Right. And they were very independent and quite systemic and right. routine. Yeah, they got right. it. Because they got yeah, it. it. And it looks the same everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. So the truth of the matter is it's, it's no different than, and I say this all the time to people. It's the same in leadership. Mm. If I was your coach, okay. you it, right? That's my little plug. But mm. you would be focusing on the culture of your building for the first six weeks. Mm. Think about that, right? If you focus, if, if leaders focus on their staff, the same way we're asking teachers to focus on their students, for the first six weeks. Oh, I think I just came up with something. Let me throw this out there. There's that want to build a school. There? Right? Yeah. That want to build a school. Just do a full culture embedded continuum for six weeks. The whole building's working on culture and nothing else. Wow. Oh, that's a theory. Who want me to tell me to do that? I love right? that. I love that. I love that. And then you gather that data. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, mm-hmm. talk about turning it around, but everybody's got to be on the same language. I mean, it, it could be done, yes. but the same way we're asking here to do it and here to do it. So it gets here. It's all the same. Mm-hmm. That, that's how I got to leadership. Leadership is a classroom. Mm. My building is your classroom. My teachers are my students. I just have an extension. Mm-hmm. You as a teacher, you only have children. Mm-hmm. I have teachers parents, children, and somewhere in there, you know, you throw up, throw up in upper management, but I just have a little more numbers than you do, but the relational part is still the same. Yeah. Because it is the, we go back to the relationships Mm -hmm. and consistency, relationships and consistency, because Mm -hmm. you have, people have expectations Mm -hmm. as a leader, depending on the district you're in and what time of day you walk in the building, it is expected that I know the name of said parent. Oh, yeah. Right? If I don't, and everyone else does, that's not looking good. That's not a good look at all. Right. But is it the expectation that a teacher knows all the names of every children in the building? Hmm. Right. But could you imagine if we, if we really rose that high? Because when I'm walking in the hallway, just because Jessica's not in my class doesn't mean I can't say, hi, Jessica, how's your day going, sweetie? Did you have a good morning? Mm-hmm. Right? Might change a life in a moment. Because really, when teachers, when leaders go into education, I don't believe they go in because they say, I love math and I want to teach multiplication. 
I just don't think that's it. <laughs> and there are people that love math and like, I love teaching social studies, but I, I don't say I'm so excited to teach about World War II. Now, right. I might be in the context of my classroom, right? But it's the people. It's the people it's that the give you, that light your soul on fire. Jesus. Remember your why. Why am I doing this? Yes. I am doing this because I need to change the world through little people who want to learn. Yes. When they don't want to learn, it's because somebody told them they don't want to learn. It's not because they chose that. Mm -hmm. Nobody, no one is, it, it believes that they don't want to learn unless somebody else said it. Think about it. Okay. Yeah. Because they've had so many negative experiences along yeah, the way. And exactly. it breaks my heart that, that teachers can be, and I'm not, I know this isn't everybody. I know it's not a blanket, but we know it's out there and everybody can pull up a teacher that they believe didn't like oh. them. Oh, oh my God. I can pull up a college professor. Mm -hmm. Now here I am a business owner, principal did all the things. I clearly remember her saying, I don't know what you're going to do with that degree. Because I wanted my minor to be in child drama. If in my other life, if I thought I was going to make equally less money, I should have just been the ballet dancer because it didn't matter. But <laughs> that, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> in my other life, I would have been able to do a really good PA and have some great, great coordination skills. But when I decided that I wanted to minor in child drama, she was like, what are you going to do with that? And that's in college, yeah. someplace that, wait, I, I was getting ready to say someplace that my mother paid for, but someplace that I had to pay for. Right. <laughs> I lost right. right? Yeah. I paid for you to insult me. Right. Because you uh, should have been guiding me. Like this is an, this is a higher level institution. So absolutely. When you involuntarily insult a child, you scarred them for, from very young, like how young? We all remember. You all remember someone. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, and it, it's on, you have to make a difference for you and for them, not for the people on your team, not for the people around you, not for the culture, the bad culture of your district. You have to do it for them because even if you are amongst one of the ones that they've had, if we all are the one, then it'll be enough of us to make each child feel like they had 12 years of everybody that loved them and poured into them. Because yeah, you can remember the bad ones easy, but when you remember the, when you say, yeah, but this teacher was good. Mm. Like this one was good. Yep. It's something about you that does that you know I, I remember my fifth grade teacher I wonder if she saw there and put it out there Linda Joukowsky she used to put her her last name on our spelling test I had Mr. Impelletier did that too I bet he, you can still spell it I can still spell it and consistency you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying consistency her last name was our bonus word on our spelling test and for me, I needed to get the word right because I wanted to be next to her. Mm. And I wanted, let me tell you why I wanted to be next to her because this is the craziest thing because she was left-handed. That was, she was the first adult that I had ever experienced that was left-handed. And when she would write on the board, her hair would just flip to the side. <laughs> and she was so cute. And she, and I think at the time she was like in a generational house type setting, but she had a fur coat and a Corvette. And I was like, oh, this is Camara all day long. <laughs> this is still Camara to this day. <laughs> I was like, that is my girl. Mm -hmm. We are, because she had the most amazing handwriting. And it was, and again, at 48, I was in, I had her in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And it was because she connected with me. Yeah. She put in the time. Mm -hmm. You have now in that same building, I was there until eighth grade. I could probably remember maybe one other teacher and that's it. But look at how I described Ms. Joukowsky. 
Yep. Right. Like I remember her car color or she used to wear a French manicure. She put her hands out and I was like, oh my God, look at her nails. Like, <laughs> like they're so cute. I want those nails. <laughs> and again, that speaks to the relation, right? Yep. So while she may have just had those things, I'm sure she had those things because that's what she liked. Mm-hmm. But that connection was leverage for her mm-hmm. to get to me. So yeah. what, so ask yourself, what leverage do you have? Because God has put things in you, not just for you, but for you to share with others, right? Yes. So you have a connection and a journey in said space. So what part of you relates to each one of your children? Mm. And it might be heaven help you if it's the part or a space that you need to change. Mm-hmm. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Because anything in a relationship that you have to change is work. Mm -hmm. Going back to consistency and relational, it's all work. Yep. And you have to know where you stand. Mm -hmm. You know what, Kamara? I think, I mean, you and I could go on, we could go on for hours, but I think you just dropped the challenge for the night. Ooh. I think you did. I think you did. What? Can you, what is inside of you that you can use to relate to others, your students, if you're a leader, your teachers, right? But the part that really got me is what if it's something that needs to change? And you, Mm -hmm. right? Because we all know that in the closest relationships, a mirror is shown. Oh, yes. Right. So when that mirror be real mm-hmm. with yourself. Mm-hmm. Be ready for the challenge because with the challenge comes good change, not yeah. just change. Absolutely. So. Wow. So I am so excited. If anybody is willing to take that challenge on, that is something you can really do tonight and you can move through the rest of your career with this challenge mm-hmm. every single year every single month, every single season, you really can take this and you could take it outside the classroom, Absolutely. right? That is a, that is a real life functional help me out challenge. Yes, absolutely. And, and I'm ready, right? That is it. That's a next level. Mm-hmm. That's leveling yourself up because if you stay status quo, you're going to stay where you are. So do you plan on staying where you are forever and ever? Amen. And if you're a new teacher, the answer better be no. Better be no. (laughs) Better be no. Because it does get better, new teachers. It really does. It It does. It gets better. But you have to ask yourself sometimes. You have to really self-reflect and say, am I touching the lives that I'm supposed to be touching in the great way that I'm supposed to be touching them? Maybe Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be in a different way. Yep. At a greater number. And you don't think about it because you don't look outside of the box. As a school leader, I went into a building and I had a teacher who had been in the building literally for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Kill it with the test scores. I'm like, how long are you going to do this for in that space? Because there's something different about you. Mm -hmm. But then five years. She left the district and went and took a leadership position somewhere else. And not because she was looking for leadership. She didn't realize that it was in her and she needed to see it outside of the box differently. Mm-hmm. And when she did, the scarcity mindset of I'm tenured, I'm vested, I've been here, I know it, these are my people. She took on the challenge. Mm -hmm. She took on the challenge because now she's able to touch more lives Mm -hmm. instead of in that classroom of 15 or 20. She's now able to touch more lives at a different space. Sometimes that's your destiny, Mm -hmm. but you have to look inside and be honest with yourself. You really do. Mm -hmm. You really, really do. So keep learning, keep growing because- it's a lifelong journey. And if you're on here and you're a teacher, you know, I know you believe that. Like you wouldn't be watching to this point if you weren't a lifelong learner. Mm-hmm. Just put that out mm-hmm. There. Mm-hmm. 
And because you enjoy the learning process, the brain is designed to keep growing and learning. So challenge yourself. How much more can I learn? What can I learn about this? Now, you know, apply the knowledge so you can be extra smart. Don't just grow and learn and pay for the knowledge, mm -hmm. but use it and keep going. But also assess, keep going and assess. What do I need now? What am I doing now? Where am I? What do I need to grow? Personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. But if in the middle, if you focus on just who you are relationally, the boat, the other two will fall into place. They sure will. They sure will. They sure will. Well, Kamari, you're getting some some good comments in the, in the Facebook feed here. So I'm saying uh, yes to the lifelong learner. Uh, Selena was talking about. Uh, yep, that's Bronte's here with us. Hey, Selena. Hey, Bronte. Um, Selena said, uh, the mirror and self-reflection has been a consistent theme for her today. So Ooh, I can't wait. Can't yeah. wait. Yep. Yep. Good. All right, Mara, we have been on for a while. We might do a part two as well. I think so. Right. I think so. Because I would really like for people to take on that challenge that you gave them in the beginning, right? You know, that six week consistency. Mm -hmm. And in order for you, again, based on where you are geographically, if you are in the South, you need to be thinking about where you want your culture to go in June. Yeah. So back to school in August. Right. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, take on that challenge. And so maybe, you know, as they start thinking about it, we can support them with some options. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I love that plan. All right. So Kamara, share with us one more time where to find you. Oh, thank you. Yes. So you can find me on PLC at PLC Leadership Group on all platforms, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm actually just Kamara Ramsey on LinkedIn and uh, YouTube as well. And uh, check out our website, plcleadershipgroup.org org we are a org so excited for anybody new that's coming in if you're a new teacher and maybe you know a new leader they need this and they probably need me so that they can collapse some time and go through a little less growing pains because we all have them when you transition so absolutely absolutely so get a hold of Kamara let her let her share with you you have heard her tonight and heard all of the expertise she has one of the things I love about doing this month and having people on from different perspectives and different areas of education is that everybody has truly brought something different, mm -hmm. and a different perspective. And so I just really hope that the listeners that are out there and anybody that gets the opportunity to do this, hop on my YouTube. It is um, dedicated designs consulting. Haven't really done too much with it, but I've been uploading all these videos. So if you're interested in behavior management and this is something you want to know more about and hear it from different perspectives of different people and different professionals, then hop over there because they're all there. And Camara will be up there too. Next week, we're actually going to have a uh, woman come on and talk about behavior management from the parent perspective. Yay. Yeah. Nice. I can't wait to hear about that because mm -hmm. um, I never used to tell teachers that I was a principal. So teachers mm -hmm. be careful about that too. Yeah. Yep. Something to keep. Bronte's them. loving that one. Yep. I never, and I trained my children. You're not allowed to tell your teachers what you do. Mm -hmm. Be careful who you're talking to and how you're talking to them. That's right. You see me now, I got an off shoulder sweatshirt with a tank top. They're not expecting that from me. Yep. Be careful. That's a, that's a whole nother <laughs> That's a whole nother right? one. <laughs> and our girls, Selena and Cherie, are doing that. Yes. I, I have conversations with parents. I think so it's May 6th, early May. Yes, May 6th. May 6th, yes. folks. So. All right. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for coming on, Kamara. Thank you. And thank you. We'll talk again some other time. Yes. Bye.